With the release of Home Assistant 2022.10, we are now entering the final few updates for the year for the Home Assistant software. We have some exciting new features for you to look at, such as an update to how integrations are shown, a new and helpful dashboard tool, and of course, we need to talk about what the heck. What the heck event. We would like to begin by stating that this is the month of What The Heck, an event that took place two years ago, but is making a comeback this year, much to the delight of Home Assistant fans everywhere. The gist of What The Heck is that for October, it will be significantly less complicated than it has ever been before to contribute to the Home Assistant project. The entrance requirement for submitting bug reports and feature requests will be lowered, to accomplish this, a new part has been added to the Home Assistant Forum. In this section, you can either suggest a new feature or vote for the one you like the most that has already been presented by another user. This does not mean that all proposals will be implemented. Still, it does make it simpler for users of varying skill levels to participate since they will no longer be required to submit a feature request on GitHub or enter into filing formal bug reports. Therefore, if you have a fantastic new concept not already implemented in Home Assistant but believe it ought to be, this month is the best time to implement it. More intuitive integrations menu. To start things off, here are a few minor but welcome adjustments to the way that interactions are shown. In the past, when you wanted to add a new integration, you had to navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, click the box labelled Add Integration and then search for the name of the integration you wish to add. This process took a while. Because integrations can sometimes support more than one device, it was assumed that you were familiar with the name of the integration that applied to your device. When you go to the integrations menu now with version 2022.10, you can search for the name of the device or program instead of searching for the brand. If there is more than one integration option for that brand, they will all be displayed in a secondary menu from which you can choose the one you want to use. This makes it much simpler to find the integrations you need, which is especially helpful for those just starting out. The best part is that even if you search for the name of the integration as you did in the past, it will still search for and display the one you are looking for, which is a nice new feature. Bluetooth update. With version 2022.10, we are pleased to announce yet another significant update to the ongoing and remarkable Bluetooth train that Home Assistant is now riding. The long-awaited active connections for the recently added Bluetooth proxies have finally been made available. In the most basic sense, this enables Home Assistant to connect with Bluetooth devices even when they are out of range, by doing so through these remote ESP Home devices. If we take a quick step back, we can see that Bluetooth proxies were enabled in the version before this one. However, in order to communicate correctly with certain Bluetooth devices, you must first establish what is known as an active connection. This functionality was absent from the update that was released one month ago. However, version 2022.10 now includes it, which means you should be able to use an even wider variety of devices. Home Assistant can now integrate with a wider variety of smart home devices, including SwitchBot curtain, LED strip lights, and possibly even door locks and other similar devices. This is a really great step in the right direction toward being able to work with all of the Bluetooth gadgets. Creating a Bluetooth proxy ESP32 can be accomplished in one of two ways. First, you can use the helpful website to quickly and easily install dedicated Bluetooth firmware onto an ESP32 device. Second, if you already have ESP Home projects that you'd like to use, all you need to do is add an additional line to your Bluetooth proxy configuration in order to get this working. Tracking using iBeacon the new integration for iBeacon tracking is yet another update and it is only tangentially connected to the Bluetooth enhancements. This enables Home Assistant to track iBeacons that you may attach to yourself or to items such as the car or house keys. Home Assistant can then approximate the distance of that iBeacon away from the nearest Bluetooth adapter. This has the potential to open up possibility of some rather nice automation, particularly those that revolve around personalization. Subviews 
Subviews, described as a way of improving the organization and usability of more complicated dashboards, is one of the new features that have been added to the Home Assistant dashboards. Previously, you could accomplish this by adding more complex code to your dashboard or utilizing a community-made dashboard for your Home Assistant like Mushroom. However, since this is now a native feature within Home Assistant, you can now accomplish this very easily and with very little effort thanks to the recent development of this feature. Simply adding a new view to your dashboard will reveal that you now have a choice for a sub-view. This new option will become available immediately. You will also notice that your sub-view has an inbuilt back button located in the upper left corner of the screen. Clicking this button will take you back to the main page, which is really cool. Manual automations with migration. Next up, we have a very cool update for those of you who want to manually do your automation in YAML. If you have made manual automation by using a code or text editor in something like VS Code or something similar, then you have probably run into a situation where your automation is not displayed in the UI. With the release of version 2022.10, you may now access any UI-generated automation in the front end and any automation built manually. You will not be able to make any changes to them, and the entire interface will be locked in its read-only state with grayed-out text, unless you use the other new button that also shows on this page, which will automatically move your manually configured updates to the UI, where you may then amend them. This other new button also appears on this page. This is a really good feature for those of you who have legacy automation set up from years ago and may have been resisting moving them over to the UI. Now you can accomplish that with a single click. Really nice inclusion. The minor alterations. This month also sees the introduction of a new template filter that when used makes it possible to perform computations on version numbers in a way that is both speedy and uncomplicated. Suppose you want to do more complicated things with the Home Assistant update capability. In that case, this will be important for you because it will allow you to effortlessly compare different version numbers in your automation by making use of templates. In addition, some work has been put into standardizing the appearance of all the dialog boxes spread around the UI to make them more consistent with one another and with one another overall. New integrations. This month also saw the inclusion of an additional nine new connectors, including the iBeacon tracker that was discussed earlier, as well as Google Sheets, Google Sheets, tracker for iBeacons, Kegtron, push button for Keymit Microbot, LiDAR, heat pump from the Nibi, the Eco Hub of Knob, Switch B, Bluetooth hydrometer with tilting display. In addition, there are two more integrations that may now be configured through the user interface rather than through the traditional configuration files. DSMR Reader, Radar. A minimal list this month, which is great to see, and nothing major that jumps out at me at all. But just make sure to have a look at that to see if there is anything related to your setup. As is customary, make sure to check out the breaking change before clicking the update button. This month's list is short, which is exactly what we like to see. Everybody, you did a fantastic job on this release. What are your thoughts on the new updates? Tell us in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.